Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today we're going to talk about the Guild Master's Guide to Ravnica. And there's a really good reason why I put a great huge question mark and an exclamation mark beside it. Uh, because, of course, right now a lot of people don't quite know what to make of this. Um, but, like everything, right, you know, the, the scene that I put up for you a dungeon master. The trick is to let the players win, but never let them know that they that you let them do that. And what Wizards of the Coast is actually doing is they're leading you in a direction which they feel you will enjoy. You just don't know about it yet. You probably will figure it out later on should you give it a chance. So this particular um, book is going to be released fairly shortly. It is obviously a Dungeons and Dragons book, and uh, it's going to be coming out on, on the 20th, the 20th of November 2018, which is pretty close to an awful lot of other publications that they are releasing, which is kind of like a big surprise for a lot of people, and going to be quite expensive. And so yes, uh, you should be able to pick it up at your local game stores, from uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, the Book Depository, all those locations that you would normally purchase them from. It will probably have an earlier release for your local game stores compared to the 20th of November, but the official release date is the 20th of November 2018. And this is, well my gosh, it's actually a settings book. Of all things to consider, they're releasing a settings book for Dungeons & Dragons. But it's not the settings book that a lot of people were expecting or hoping for. So there's a lot of people who are either confused, frustrated, angry. Some will be delighted. Others will be unsure what to make of it. So there's a lot of different feelings. You know, I think shock and annoyance and surprise and confusion are all perfectly normal. What I'm hoping is that during this live stream, I will be able to um, settle some of your fears about this particular release uh, because I don't know if you've noticed but my channel if you've been watching it for a while I use a lot of Magic the Gathering art but I don't actually play Magic the Gathering the card game and um, the Guildmaster's Guide or Ravnica is from Magic the Gathering and um, it's not an official Dungeons and Dragons campaign that we have seen in the past this is actually something new not new if you're a Magic player, but new if you're playing something like Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, so what I really wanted to um, focus on is try to alleviate a lot of people's concerns about the fact that they are dealing with something they, they didn't ask for. N nobody asked for this. Nobody really said, look, give me this. And suddenly they wind up with something they did not expect. But it is a new Dungeons and Dragons campaign setting. It's literally a new one for us. Nobody's ever played Dungeons and Dragons in this unless they homebrewed it and created it themselves. And that's actually a really good thing. Okay, you're not getting recycled material now. You're actually getting something completely new that has never been printed and released for Dungeons and Dragons. You are going to get to explore a totally new world. This is a complete world in itself. Okay, and not only is it a complete world that you've never been in before, unless of course you've read the books for Magic the Gathering or the story, the lore behind it and played the game. Um, this is a, a really strange world in that it's a bit like the Star Wars Coruscant. Uh, it's a, a worldwide cityscape. Literally covers the entire world. And I guess um, Taking 20 Cody did a great job of explaining Magic the Gathering and how it all works. Certainly could do a, did a better job than I could possibly do in a live stream. And there are other videos out there that explain it a bit um, pretty well as well. I believe um, Nate over at um, WAS20 did a, a video explaining a little bit about Magic the Gathering and the world of uh, Ravnica. I personally don't know very much about Ravnica, but I use the artwork and I see the benefits of exploring a world like that and all the other worlds that are related to, to Magic the Gathering. And I, I want to make that abundantly clear to people so that you don't freak out too much by providing you with a bit of 
artwork because I've been collecting the artwork for the past few months for other videos which I may or may not be able to do now based on certain circumstances but at least I can do it for this particular video or live stream and that is you are now entering a cosmopolitan um, fantasy world where you're dealing with city um, dynamics where you, you're not you're not out in the in the whoops you're not out in the wilderness you're not in necessarily a dungeon uh, there are multiple levels to the um, the city world of Ravnica so that is one of the the benefits to it is that you you're going to get to explore and deal with a totally different aspect that means you can't just do anything you like in uh, in Ravnica because there are going to be guards there is a legal system um, there is a military force there is a uh, um, a justice system in place all of that is taking place within this world and on top of that you get to deal with some of the more interesting aspects of this world and that is would you believe it bustling markets where you can buy stuff so all of that gold that you've been stashing for who knows how long that you can never find anything to sort of use it on you've got a place to now go and spend it does that mean that you're going to get an opportunity to buy magic items of a common variety or uncommon variety? Who knows? That'll really be up to the dungeon master who's using this particular book. But I suspect that they will tie that uh, into the, the economics of the world. Now, there's speculation on my part, but I still think it's quite likely that they will tie that in into the world. So you have somewhere to spend your gold. Another aspect to um, Ravnica is it is full of shadowy back alleys where you can do your, 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 your dealings, your uh, secret uh, spying, your passing of information. Uh, all of the things that you would expect from a, a political drama or story or um, a spy setting, all of those things are all tied up and you, all of these things are going to be taking place uh, behind the scenes, behind closed doors, uh, in places people don't normally travel. So there's another aspect to it. And I guess this is probably more akin to what we're used to, which is your your dungeon location. Okay, The lower sections of Ravnica are going to be much more like your, your general dungeon location as such. All right. Now, the other thing I wanted to say is that there are, it's complicated, this city, okay? There are, there's 10 guilds, 10 guilds of influence. Now, I'm not going to explain all the different guilds. You can jump on and take a look at what um, Cody did. You probably already have, um, but there are plenty of videos out there that explain the guilds of Ravnica, and they all have a part to play in keeping the balance within the city world. They also don't like each other very much so there's plenty of opportunity for conflict and it's this is going to present your players with an opportunity to pick one of these guilds really you've got to pick a side um, standing between these guilds could probably mean that you won't have the support you need um, that's obviously completely up to how the dungeon master wants to run it but I would suspect that they are going to make this, they're going to bake this concept of the guilds very much into the setting book itself. Ha! That means there's got to be trouble. And there's going to be lots of trouble. That means crime syndicates to foil or join. That means um, potentially crime syndicates that you could, uh, might have to try and avoid completely. <laughs> you don't have to join them, you don't have to foil them, and maybe you just need to avoid them. There's just too much trouble. And then, um, some of them are uh, don't, not quite as dark as the image that I have presented to you, but certainly some are extremely dark and dangerous to be involved with. Next, scientific institutes to study with. Now, does that mean you're going to get a new class like the Artificer, where you get to merge machine and magic together? We don't know yet. I don't think anybody does. I think it's highly likely that they will try to introduce something like the Artificer somewhere. Maybe it's this book. Maybe it's somewhere else. Maybe it'll be a PDF. But it's it's so much tied into the very nature of Magic the Gathering um, and Ravnica that not having some sort of way of 
uh, reflecting that is going to be quite odd because you don't have all of the tools available at present with the books that have been released to be able to, to delve into the concept of merging science, machine and magic. And so that's going to probably have to play some part in some way. Otherwise, it's not really going to make much sense. Okay, next, church hierarchies that uh, probably want to control your belief system. Or is that church is temples, churches, temples that want to walk around the city? Now, literally, that there is a building that you're seeing. Okay, this is a location that, that goes for a wander. This is how crazy the world of Ravnica is. It is unlike anything that you guys have had to deal with before. And the players are probably going to have a ball. Even if you don't necessarily like it, it's certainly very creative. Okay, all right. Next, military forces. There are a set of military forces and organizations that run a military that will probably try to protect the system in place or possibly take your, your rights away from you or impose their system upon you. However you see it, there is going to be a military force of some kind. That means these guys you're going to have to be very careful of because you won't be able to go running riots. You can't just do anything and any anywhere. You can't just fire off your fireball or your magic anywhere you like because trouble is going to come and the chances are that the, uh, the guards are going to be tough. They're probably not going to be a pushover. Of course, there's always something to balance all of that, right? And that is the, the justice system, the court system, to keep the peace or to take your rights and, and <laughs> away from you or potentially make sure that they are set in place. It doesn't matter how you see it, but this is an example of the kind of our work and systems in place. Yes, literally, there's a judge. Okay, so that's how crazy this world is. That means giant creatures and monsters and beings um, things that we we don't really see until high level, yet it's going to be quite a normal thing, even if you're playing at low level. Ha! That means the buzzing swarms of people and creatures and monsters and other aspects of the world. Um, rampaging gangs. You're definitely going to be seeing quite a few rampaging gangs. Uh, it's up to you whether you stop, avoid them, or join them. Um, power, wealth, influence is all part of Ravnica. Okay, and there's also, because of all of the different guilds, there's definitely going to be war. And I would imagine that this particular book is going to set it up so that you can have some sort of major conflict, or small conflicts, depending on what you want. And there is a web of war that's been going on. The image here is just one of the images that I pulled off, but there are many images that relate to the wars that take on um, a life of their own and spread within um, uh, Ravnica. So, plenty of fun to be had. So if you're worried about, I'm not going to get to fight anything and, and it's always going to be about role play and political um, maneuvering and stuff like that, that's not necessarily the case. I think you're going to find that there's going to be Plenty of space for everything. Okay, and of course, let's move on to the Planeswalkers. Now, these are the individuals who travel uh, from world to world. Ravnica is just one of them. And no doubt, they'll have a part to play in this world as well. And it's also possible that the players might find themselves being a Planeswalker of some kind themselves. I mean, Ravnica is just one of many worlds within the Magic the Gathering world itself, or franchise itself. So that means that planar travel is probably going to be quite quite easy. Um, if not easy, certainly baked in and tied in as a possibility at some point. Ha! Doesn't sound quite so bad now when you think about it, really. Okay, so let's get to the juxta of it. We, we know enough about um, Ravnica now, hopefully to give you an idea. Does this mean that they are trying to take Magic the Gathering and join it with the D&D worlds? Well, they're certainly using it as an economic basis to try to pull the players who play Magic the Gathering to Dungeons and Dragons. I have no doubt that Wizards of the Coast would like 
everybody to play Magic the Gathering, the card game, and Dungeons and Dragons. And because Magic the Gathering was based on Dungeons and Dragons, I think you need to understand that they are probably wanting to still base everything in the culture that existed for Dungeons and Dragons, the settings, the world, the way we play the game. They probably still want to still keep that because remember they based Magic the Gathering on Dungeons and Dragons. It's not the other way around. Now is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? I think it's probably going to wind up being a smart move. It will probably upset a few people and there'll be more than a few individuals who will ignore this completely and pass it off as being just a bump in the road and a book they wouldn't bother with. And I can totally understand that. Um, part of the problem with the the concept of using Magic the Gathering as a jumping point, particularly for the first setting book, is that's not what people wanted. But if they didn't do it this way, the chances are that the interest in this particular setting book would be very minimal. We've had so few releases that um, this is the prime time. You know, you take what you can get, right, when you get so little. And this is probably why they have released the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica first before releasing anything else. Now, um, why is there likely to be conflict uh, within Ravnica? Well, because uh, the individual who is um, the guild pet you know, ties them all together to make sure that they actually work together and don't fight amongst themselves. He's a planeswalker and he's been traveling all over the place. So he hasn't been in Ravnica. So while, while the, uh, the guild pact is, is sort of, you know, off running around doing his own thing, it's going to mean a lot of political conflict. And they're going to provide you, from what I've seen so far and heard, they're going to provide you with a Dungeon Master toolkit, a toolbox. And it's quite clear to me that that's going to be the case simply because they have also decided to release a dice set, which they've been doing for pretty much everything, but that's not the key factor. They're, re they're going to release a Ravnica map pack. I would expect to see more than a few different types of maps of Ravnica within the book and in the, um, in the book itself, but also as released, uh, published, glossy maps. Things that you can use at your table. Whether that be a world map, and I suspect they will give you a world map, and probably a section or map that you can use sort of um, as an example of some of the locations you could play in. Um, that's what I would expect. I think that's quite likely. I think it's going to be more like uh, Curse of Strahd, where you get a map that gives you the world itself, and then on the other side it gives you lots of little locations that would sit within that world, that are sort of representative of uh, the different districts. And they've already talked about this. They've already said, look, we're going to detail the 10th district, and that is what I think they will focus on. They'll focus on that particular aspect of it. That means uh, you've got to try to balance um, magic and machine and politics. That probably definitely means you're going to wind up with new character options. You're going to have to join a uh, a guild, you get to choose a guild, okay, this means adventure building um, framework and blocks for the dungeon master. Now Magic the Gathering gets a much bigger budget for their art, so expect some pretty fantastic art from now on I would imagine. That means gigantic monsters, I, I've already shown you a couple of images, but gigantic monsters running amok in the city is probably going to be something that is not necessarily commonplace, but something you can certainly build into your, your campaign and your adventure world. Now the guilds, when you join a guild, it's going to replace your background mechanically. They've already stated this. Um, they've already said that you are going to get adventure hooks that are based off the players' uh, guilds that they have joined. You're going to pick, apparently you pick two. Um, I thought it would have been just one, but most of the, the guilds have sort of like two, um, two focuses of magic, now which I'll talk about in a second. So expect adventure hooks, expect um, adventure plots based on what guild the, the, the characters or players 
select for their character. Um, this is probably going to pull in a lot of people. I would expect to see something like some of the optional races available. There's a good possibility we'll see something like um, Angels being playable as a race. Now this is speculation, but I think it's quite li likely. Guaranteed we're going to see Goblins. They've already got Goblins as a playable race in um, Volo's Guide to Monsters. So bringing that across, I think that's quite likely. We won't necessarily see something like the, um, the Crasis, which is sort of like mutant monsters, but it might be an option to play. You never know. I suspect it's more likely going to be something that you will have to deal with in the city as it goes, runs riot and causes all sorts of strife, which is always going to be a lot of fun anyway. Okay, Undead. Playable race. I think it's highly likely that being playing an Undead is going to be a playable race. I know that sounds just crazy and overpowered. I don't think necessarily a zombie, because there's lots of zombies in um, Ravnica, but it's, they are lower level sort of undead. They, they sort of do the menial stuff. They, they fight the wars. They, uh, they feed the population. They are also sort of do all the menial stuff that most people don't want to. They're like the sort of, the, I guess, the slaves, the workers, you know? The pe they do all the stuff that nobody else really wants to do. And there are plenty of indications that it is going to be an option for a playable race just because some of the guilds are built completely around this. They are, their key figure, figures have passed on to the afterlife. But even so, they are still around. So I think that's definitely a possibility. Uh, there is also another race called the, the Vel Veldekin. Is it Veldekin? Veldekin. Uh, basically a purple humanoid of some kind. They have an affinity to sort of machines and magic and stuff like that, but you know, build it how you wish it. Um, also, the weirds. Uh, these are sort of like elemental creatures or beings. So, oh look, we've already got the genocide, so why not this? I think this is highly likely. I think that's definitely likely to be um, part and parcel of the whole package. And of course, then we've got magic. Now, magic's always a big part of any world that you explore. And apparently there are five different colors um, that focus on magic. And white being life and law. Blue is magic and engineering and water. Um, black is death and undeath. So that seems interesting. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that black is bad. Green is nature. Red is fire and fury. And... Hey, all of this sounds to me to be pretty cool. Am I the sort of dungeon master who would like to run a game in a city? I'm not so much that sort of person, but I would love to have the tools available to wreck a city. That certainly sounds like an awful lot of fun to me. And if I can chuck a few um, ginormous monsters in there, put in some political intrigue as well, to make things slightly more complicated, then it sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, all right, let's get down to the gist of it right here. This is where I think the key point needs to be understood. Is Wizards of the Coast going to take your favorite hobby and are they going to insert it or are they taking Magic the Gathering and inserting it into the world of Dungeons and Dragons? Absolutely. We, we'd asked for planar travel, uh, whether it be the astral planes or whether it be um, spell jammer or anything like that. I think absolutely they are going to incorporate Ravnica into the very mythos and uh, world of the planes. Whether that be the astral planes, the positive planes, it doesn't matter. I think you're going to see more and more of the, the Magic the Gathering worlds incorporated into... Dungeons and Dragons and you don't need to worry about it because if you don't like it you can just ignore it and leave it out but I certainly think it's going to happen now I've played Dungeons and Dragons for a while and there are amongst my friends and I have quite a few people who play Dungeons and Dragons in New Zealand and not that many actually play Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons what I found interesting is when I posted that comment on YouTube the number of people who came back and said, look, Fred, um, well, not Fred, because I didn't I didn't call myself Fred, or House of D&D, &D, remember, House of D&D, &D. 
The response was, I play Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons, but I wouldn't necessarily want to play my Dungeons and Dragons game in Ravnica or a Magic the Gathering world. Although some were like, yes, I would. So I think it's definitely going to be baked in. And this is going to be part of a lot of changes, which I think I'm going to talk about in future videos, but not today, because that would be inappropriate, since the focus needs to be on Ravnica and Dungeons and & Dragons and how that's going to play out. So, sounds like a lot of fun to me. Personally, I think it's going to be a good move, even if it doesn't seem like it initially. I think it's going to be hard for people to warm up to the idea of having another world included into their Dungeons & Dragons settings. But it's coming. It's on its way. And uh, in November, we'll, we'll know whether it's a good product or a bad product. But remember, this is the testing ground for what they do with the other settings. They're not going to muck around with the established ones. They're using this setting as a testing ground. Now, if this works and this book is taken and received well, and it's, it's built in such a way that it appeals to players and dungeon masters, and they use it, and it gives you enough information you can run your own adventure, then I think it's going to be a really good idea. Okay, all right, I've said it. That's all I'm going to say. We're going to get to the, the questions and answers side of this. But hey, look, if you found this helpful or informative in any way, please share and like the video. Subscribe if you want more content like this, because I know I've been along, away a long time, but I will do more content. So subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live. And I will be going live a lot. Um, and when I publish a new pre-published video, when I'm not going live, I will publish some stuff that isn't live. Don't worry. Uh, look, you supported me by watching this. I appreciate the number of people who turned out to watch today. That's really awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, also, too, if you want to support me, I don't do Patreon, okay? I don't like the idea of people paying me to do content on YouTube because then I, I am expected to produce a particular product. But I do have affiliate links down in the description which you can check out. Now, if you have questions, we're going to go to the, to the live chat right now. So stick around. Um, we'll have a chat. Otherwise, if you're not part of the live chat, um, you can just put on your comments down below. What do you think of Ravnica? What's your response? Was this helpful in some way? What do you want to add to this? Are you hopeful for this or are you concerned? I really hope that I have alleviated some of the fears and frustrations you might have had. Because I honestly think they're going to do a pretty good job with this. Um, do I think that there's going to be repeat material from other books uh, or Unearthed Arcana? Absolutely. I think there is definitely going to be repeat material. You can be guaranteed of it, but there'll be new stuff as well. And anyway, hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.